compound inequalities, which is conjunction. This is this, this changing from or to and statements, okay? Yeah, again, this relates back to that set notation stuff like this. Um, right? It, if, if you look at the and statements, which is, we use this symbol between them, uh, only for sets like this, but uh, it, it's got to be part of both A and B. It can't be part of just one and not the other. That would be an or statement. It's very different. So, uh, like like this one. Let's see. Uh, right, yeah, you got the sevens. It's, it's, I know it's on the list right there. 7-Eleven. But again, sometimes I miss. So, yeah, 7-Eleven are part of both A and B, which is why it is the set A and B. So, when we look at intervals or compound inequalities that have and statements, it needs to be part of one and it needs to be part of the other as well in order for it to be true. So something like this, again, just this would be really what you'd be graphing and giving interval notation after, after you've been solving the two inequalities. So this is the kind of like the end part of it, right? So I'll continue to put the stuff on the left in red there. So that's x is less than or equal to 4, right? So I got 0, and then 4 is to the right of 0. Now, this one is equal to x. It's equal to 4, so I'm going to use a closed circle on this thing. It's not eating the x, so it goes uh, as far to the left as negative infinity, right? Now, this one in green is at negative 5, which is on the left side of 0. And that one's not equal to 5, so it's an open circle. But this one is eating the x, okay? So this one goes... Um, uh, well, I'm going to put it underneath just so we can see the difference, right? Now, the, the question that we should ask ourselves at this point, especially with the graph, is where does it show me answers that are part of the red and the green? Well, it's, it's only where the two lines overlap, right? Which is everywhere between 4 and 0. Which also means that uh, on the graph you'd want to erase this garbage. Oh, here, okay. So even though the green line does go infinitely to the right, it stops at 4 with this AND statement. And even though the red line goes as far to the left as negative infinity, it stops at negative 5 because of the AND statement. Now this is, this is um, the graph. okay? And again, on, on the graph you wouldn't show both lines, just the one in between. But the interval, right, this, now I'm looking at the purple line because uh, that's where it shows the intersection. And it starts at negative 5, right? That's where the two lines kind of crossed or intersected. That's a key word right there. But negative 5, it's an open circle, which means even though it's, it would make the red inequality true, it doesn't make the green one true. So we can't actually include it as uh, a solution to this compound inequality. Now, the purple line goes as far to the right as 4. Now, 4 makes the red inequality true, but it also makes the green one true, so it, it's true for red and green, so we, in, oh, we include it, rather, there we go, with a square bracket. So that would be the interval and the graph. Now, if, if you can do that, if you can graph these AND statements, just like we did with the OR statements, just different slightly, then you can do the rest of these problems, right? Like, uh, again, it's not, it's, I wouldn't even say it's making you work harder, it's just making you do more work, like this one. Well, all of them, not just this one, but like the next few that we're going to be doing, it's like, well, you know what, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's more work, but it's not really more hard, okay? So let, let's go through these ones as well, okay? So again, I would, I would solve these just like I would a regular inequality. It doesn't matter if there's two of them. So yeah, I'll keep the one on here left, red. I've got to get rid of that plus 5 on both sides. Drop the negative 2x is now greater than uh, 12 there. And divide both sides by negative 2. Yeah, that's going to flip the inequality, so now x is... Oh, almost didn't flip it. I'm going to flip it. X is now less than negative 6, and that completes that inequality. But let's go further to the right here. And we'll do this one uh, in green again. So we're going to distribute the 3. 3 times X is 3X. 
3 times negative 1 is 3. This is less than or equal to 3. It's pretty good. And we'll zero out this negative 3. <laughs> add 3 instead. There we go. Zeroes that out. Drop the 3x is now less than or equal to 6. And then divide both sides by 3. This is a positive 3, so x is just less than or equal to 2. So I got these two statements, okay? And, um, you know, like, I, if this was a test, I'd say you'd put the and statement between, but there's actually a, another way that we can write this. But, but I want to show the interval first, okay? So I, I'm going to do the graph first. And in red, we got uh, negative 6, so that's 0, then negative 6 is on the left, and 2 is on the right, something like this. So negative 6 open circle because it's not equal to negative 6. It's not, it's not eating the x either, so it goes to the left. Okay, so I mean, I didn't have a lot of space there, but it goes to the left. x is less than or equal to 2, so that's a closed circle there. And this one's not eating the x either, so I'm going to put it a little bit above it. This one also goes to the left. Now again, we, we need to look at this and say, well, uh, maybe we should even re-graph it um, so that represents it this more accurately okay but and we'll do this in purple just where where did the where does it show that the solutions are for not only just the red but also the green well it's everything not just right here but both those lines go as far to the left as we can take it and where does it stop it stops at six right as soon as we hit negative I meant negative six as soon as we hit negative six then we have this sole green line right here. So I'm just looking at the purple. And uh, it's going to go all the way to, I'll try to keep this kind of consistent there. But yeah, this graph, uh, negative 6 was not included in the red, so I still get an open circle there. But uh, it goes infinitely to the left. So that's going to make the interval notation on this one. It goes infinitely to the left, but it does stop at negative 6 which is also not included, so I got a regular parenthesis there. So we have the inequality here up here at the top, up here. Uh, but again, since this was a, this was kind of a unique scenario where it's just x is less than negative 6, it also means that uh, I didn't really need any of this garbage. Okay, I just needed this, and that x is less than negative 6 would be the full answer as an inequality of this compound inequality. Again, and that's because uh, it only shows the intersection between the two on that purple line going to negative 6 to the right. right? In, this, in this graph, I should say, that I'm looking at, all these values, even though they make the green one true, they don't make the red one true. So since it's not true for red and green, it means that all these values in between the red and green would be false. So, once again, the size of the problems change, but the methods don't. I'll, I'll keep this one in red. Uh, distribute, there's 3 here. 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. We've still got the plus 12. It's greater than or equal to 18. And I have done better greater than signs, but I don't care. Combine like terms, negative 9 plus 12. That's a positive 3. Have we seen this one before? Seems pretty similar. Oh, it's not quite the same. I'll get rid of that plus 3, right? Subtract 3 from both sides. And that zeroes that out, so I got 3x now is greater than or equal to 15. Divide both sides by 3. It's not going to change the inequality. x is greater than or equal to 5. So that completes that inequality. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so this one we'll do in green. I'm going to put the x's on the left and the numbers on the right. Uh, not only because you guys want it, but because it's going to give us a positive coefficient. And yeah, we'll simplify this a little bit. I'll get rid of the plus 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides while simultaneously getting rid of the 4x's, which are also on the wrong side of the equal sign. So that zeroes out these parts. And then 5x, 5x's minus 4x's would give me 1x's. is less than 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And... Uh, the coefficient of x is already 1, so I'm just going to make it a phantom 1. And I, I think that looks pretty. So let's look at both. Let's look at both, and then we'll graph both of these and see what we get. And yes, it is an and statement between the two.
even though in some of these cases there's other ways to simplify it, but we'll see more compound inequalities after we finish these end things. So right in the middle we got 0, uh, negative 4 is to the left, and 5 is on the right. I'm just going to put both on right now. I'll start with the red. x is greater than or equal to 5, so that's equal to 5, so I'm going to close in that circle. It's eating the x, so this one goes to the right. And uh, the green one, x is less than negative 4. It's an open circle because it's not equal. And it's not eating the x, so it goes to the left. Now again, just, just some quick analysis on this. We would look at this graph and would say, where does the graph show that solutions are for both the red and the green? Well, for a graph, it means that they need to either overlap or intersect. Okay, I don't see anywhere on this graph that they intersect. So, for this one, I would say, you know what, uh, there's no solutions on this one, D and E, which also means that the original uh, inequalities that we wrote there, uh, neither of them are true because there's no and part in that, okay? So, another unique scenario where we did not see an intersection. Now, if this was an or statement, it would completely change, right? If this was an OR statement, we could easily write the interval for that, but it's not, so we're kind of stuck on that. Uh, well, let's look at this one. Maybe this one will come out a little different. So, you know, again, just focus on one at a time. And, uh, you know, distribute your 3 there. 3 times 5x is 15x's. 3 times negative 4 would be negative 12. This is less than or equal to 24. Yeah, that's a 4 right there. So add 12 to both sides. To zero out that negative 12, which it does, drop the 15x, which is now less than or equal to 36. Uh, I did not expect that. Let's see, 8 and 12. Okay, that's fine. We'll divide both sides now by 15, and here's our first fraction of the day. Right, x is less than or equal to, wait a second, 36. Yeah, yeah, no, that's simplifiable by 3 right there. 36 divided by 3 is 12, and uh, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I'm going to keep that as 12 fifths. And, yeah, we can put that on a graph, especially when we're doing it by hand. It makes it pretty easy. Uh, usually in the past, when we see fractions in the inequality, though, they don't require it in the homework. So even though I'm going to graph it, it may not be necessary for you guys to do it on the homework, okay? So 12 fifths, I'm going to keep it there. And let's look at this one here. And, uh, you know, you guys like the x is on the left, so I'm going to keep it on the left, and then the numbers can be on the right. All right, so again, one, one uh, fell swoop on this. Let's get rid of that uh, plus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides. Does zero that out. 11 minus 5 is positive 6, and I'm going to show the plus there so we know it's positive, even though I'm going to erase it here in a second. The 7x, we got to zero that out, so subtract 7x there. Now that uh, negative 5x's and negative 7x's gives us negative 12x's, which is less than positive 6, so I already know it's positive. And we'll divide both sides by negative 12. And again, this is where it's going to flip that inequality because we divided both sides by a negative. So x is greater than negative 1 half now. So we have both inequalities solved, and, uh, you know, just... Just in case it's not one of those unique scenarios, I'll put an and between the two, because it seems proper. So we got negative one half and we got twelve fifths. And you know, again, proportionally speaking, I don't really care where you put these, like negative one half here and neg uh, positive twelve fifths. It's like, well, they look like they're the same. Yeah, that's just because we're trying to get through this, okay? So I, I don't care if you put, you know, twelve marks in between here or there. None of that garbage matters, okay? So just Look at this like it's one line. We don't really care about the proportionality of this. I'll start with the red. And uh, red at 12 fifths, it's equal to 12 fifths, so we got a closed circle at 12 fifths there. It's not eating the x, so this line would go to the left. And at negative 1 half, it's not equal to x, so this is just an open circle. It is eating the x, though, so this one would go to the right. And again, we look and we see, well... These two lines that we've drawn here, um, do they show an intersection? And they do. Right? Or, uh, you know, some people would say, well, do they show an overlap? And they do. So let me redraw this so that we can do this more accurately. Because this is, again, how it would look like 
on the, the homework uh, if you guys were to need to graph these fractional types. Well, we got an open circle at negative one half, which means it's false for one. Uh, the 12 fifths, though, was a closed circle on the red, and it's also included in the green, so that will still put a closed circle there. And then we can see there's red here and green intersecting it in between, so it's just everything in between, you guys. So that would be the graph right there. And the interval notation for this, I can see that this graph goes as far to the left as negative one-half. It's not included, so I have a parenthesis there. Going to the right, it stops at 12 fifths, which is included in the solution set. So I put a square bracket on that, okay? So even though I showed the graph with the purple, green, and red there, the only one I would really be concerned about putting on the homework, if they were required, would be something like this, okay? Now, if, if they don't have the fractions on the graph and you're required to do them on the homework, just do a quick estimate, right? Like 12 fifths, that's uh, 2.4. And negative one point negative one half is negative zero point five, so hopefully you should be able to put those at least in their approximate locations, which usually the homework will accept. Uh, uh, for me, the the and statement is good, and it it communicates that we're looking for the intersection between the red and green. However, a, another way to write it is kind of like what we're looking at with that end of class quiz thing is we say, well, we got x, and x is between twelve fifths and negative one half, right? So we can sand sandwich it between these two. And this is, by, way, by the way, the more formal way to write the inequality. So I'd say, well, x is, I know from negative 1 half, it goes to the right of x. It doesn't include negative 1 half, so I have just the regular less than symbol there. For the 12 fifths, it's included, so I get the equal part of that. But the line goes to the left of it, so it can't eat the x on that portion of it. So... Uh, this would be the inequality part of that problem. This one wants the inequality inequality notation. Oh, so we don't even need the graph or the any interval notation on this one. So I'm not going to, especially since we're kind of behind on time. Now, I think we've seen these before, right? Like, it's like hey, you know what? Split this up into three parts. Now, for principles of equality, instead of doing it to one, you've got to do it to all three. And I do want to isolate the x's in between. So I want to get rid of that plus 1 by uh, subtracting 1 from both sides. Okay, so that does 0 out to 1. I'm left with that x over 2. None of this is going to change the inequalities. But negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And 5 minus 1 is 4. Next up, uh, and this one will require multiplication, right? Multiplying by 2. We're going to multiply all the terms by 2, though. But since it was positive, it's not going to flip those inequalities. But I end up with just x or 1x. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4 times 2, which is 8. Well, this is a compound inequality, and that's all we would really want uh, in this answer, right? Now, this is just, just so we understand if you wanted to graph it. Not that I'm going to. I feel compelled to almost, but I'm not. Um, it's just saying that x is between negative 8 and 8, okay, from left to right. So it, uh, a graph wouldn't be necessary even to write the interval notation on this one. Uh, if, if it's sandwiched between those two, it needs to make both true, which is why when we saw this before, I, I talked about it being an AND statement, even though we haven't gone over AND statements. So this is an AND statement. It has to intersect the two, and it's just between negative 8 and 8. Yeah, since the next question does ask for um, the interval notation, let, let me do this one real quick, okay? So I know it goes as far to the left as negative 8. It stops at 8 on the right. So all we would really need to worry about in this case is um, the brackets, right? Because this one, negative 8 is included, and 8 also is included. This one, same thing, solve and give interval notation. Oh, interval notation, that's good. We'll do interval notation on this one. So I, I'm going to show the graph just so we can visualize it. And again, that's kind of for my sake as well. So again, we're, we've got to do it in three parts on this thing. I'll get rid of that negative 5. We'll add 5 to all three parts. I know you guys can feel the end, man. It's common 
Yeah, I'm kind of pressed for time on this too. So negative 2 plus 5 is 3. 7 plus 5 is 12, which are both multiples of 3. Yeah, just divide everything by 3 now to make that x. And again, we divide it by a positive so it doesn't flip the inequalities. 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. So that would be the inequality notation, but it did ask for interval notation, okay? So for interval notation, again, just so we can see it visually what's going on. Uh, it's not a great line, but it'll work. I got 1 here. That's where 0 is going to be, and I'll put 4 there, okay? So at 1, I'd have a closed circle because I see that x is equal to 1. And it's eating the x, which means it goes to the right. But then it gets to 4, which is not included because x is, can't be equal to 4. And it's not eating the x there, so it would have to go to the left. So it's everything in between, which again allows us to visualize what the interval is going to look like from the graph, hopefully. So yeah, it starts at 1 on the left. It's included because it's a closed circle. It goes all the way to 4. It's an open circle, so we get a parentheses like this. So we actually showed all three parts of that, the, in, the inequality, the graph, and the interval for that one. All right, same thing, you guys. I mean, you know, it's asking for the graph, I guess, now, and interval notation. Not a problem. In fact, this one has the distribution on it, but, again, hopefully that's not a problem for us. Right? Distribute the 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So now I got negative 3 is less than 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 4. Uh, let's get rid of that negative 6, though. We'll add 6 to all three parts. Let's zero out that uh, 6 right there, right? Negative 3 plus 6 is 3, which is less than, we'll drop to 2x, which is less than or equal to 4 plus 6 is 10. And now we'll divide all the terms by 2. So, yeah, I'm going to keep that as 3 halves, 1.5 if you'd like. Uh, my coefficient of x is 1 now. We didn't divide by a negative, so it keeps the inequalities the same, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So this is, uh, yeah, it has a fraction, but again, hopefully that's not a big deal for us right now, because, well, I apologize. I'm doing it by hand, so it's not a big deal, but on the, on the homework, you're going to want to estimate that stuff, okay? So, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 5, and then if I looked at halves, you know, something like this. That'd be three of the halves. Okay, so we're ready to graph this thing at three halves. It's not equal to x, so we've got an open circle. And that portion of the inequality is eating the x, so it would go to the right. Now, again, I'm, I'm making that line short on purpose because I'm expecting some sort of intersection on this, right? So at five, if I looked at just this part, x is less than or equal to five. It's equal to five, so i got to... I'll do something better. There we go. And this one's not eating the x, so it would go to the left. So I can see uh, on the left, this line's going to go as far to the right as 5 until it makes it false. And the 5 is going to go as far to the left to the 3 halves until it becomes false. So that's the graph. We have the inequality. So next up, our interval notation. As far to the left, that line, that green one goes, is 3 halves, which is an open circle, so it's not included regular parentheses. Then it goes to the right, stopping at 5. Now that's a closed circle, so it's included in the answer set. And so I got a square bracket on that one. Well, maybe I hurried those a little bit, a uh, little bit, because, you know, it's a couple minutes early. Uh, so if you guys 